got rid of my case of the noodle arms and uh, now I'm going to double check and see how accurate I was. I was trying to go more by feel and by sight when I was doing the plunge cuts. So now I'm gonna take the uh, template that I drew around on the other side, I'll turn it around and try to place it on this side according to where the plunge cuts came through and see how I did. Looks pretty good. I'm very excited about that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and draw it in so that I can reference it every time I make a cut. I've learned after I move my hand and the uh, template falls down on me that I need to go back and reset it and make sure it's okay because sometimes just the weight of the template will cause it to skew a little bit so looks good though came out okay Time for a new marker. A pencil will do just fine. I'm a little concerned about how I cut lower on this side than on this side when trying to start the base but we'll do a design adjustment I'll smooth it out on both sides round it out and it should look great I'm gonna finish blocking out from the nose around the front of the face down the front of the paw to the base of the platform the rest of the platform and then hopefully this whole chunk right here will just fall out. short here just a little bit with the chainsaw because if I go too deep it'll give the term bustion bustion your chops new meaning and I don't want to do that so I've got an old chisel here I'm gonna see if I can whack it loose look at that yay Chopper.
without cutting him a new neckline. Let's talk about the next couple of potential plunge cuts that I'm not going to make just yet, but I'll tell you why. One of the things you can do is measure. Just hold your, your bar up there and look. And you go, well, I can, I can probably do that. Um, this right here is rubber and metal. So we don't want to tear up the chain. We don't want to tear up the jaw horse. But more importantly, we don't want to tear up, we don't want to tear up the dog. Also here, I could probably do that. This, mm, probably not. So since they're that close, here's what I'm gonna do. And you'll be able to do this often. Okay, so imagine with me here. Okay, so my sculpture is about that wide. When I start the plunge cut on this side, if I'm off like just a little bit this way, I'm gonna cut up into his, uh, into his chest. If I'm off a little bit this way, I'm gonna either cut into a leg or I'm gonna cut into his tummy. So it, it's a lot more accurate if I can get this narrow before I start making the plunge cut. So I'm gonna wait until I get this side cut off and get this side cut off and then I'm only gonna have the actual width of the dog. You know, the two legs and the empty space in between. And potentially, we'll see how I'm feeling about it when we get there. I might actually cut back in between the legs this way before I do the plunge cut this way. And I may also do it with a much, much smaller saw. But the point of my, where I started out here was, it's a lot easier to be accurate if you plunge cut through a narrow portion than it is to plunge cut through a wide portion. You just, once you get your saw in there, you, you learn this way, this way, where am I at, how does it feel? You stop and check, you stop and think, you stop and feel about it. But it still, if you're off by just a little bit, you could cut an inch of something else off. So if it's close, switch to a smaller saw and switch to a much more narrow spot and just to a narrow spot if you don't have another saw. And your accuracy is gonna go way up. I have two templates here. One is from the top of a well-proportioned um, concrete statue. And the other is the face-on view of uh, Mr. Cooper here that I'm getting ready to uh, detail in. Now, I presume based on the pictures that I got that while his owner was trying to take a picture down on top of his head, he was like going, hey mom, what are you doing? Because he kept looking up at the camera is what it looked like from the picture. So rather than uh, ask her to try to take a bunch more pictures, um, I can compensate and still be accurate with using this and this. And then I've matched it up to the size of his nose. Um, oh, it's off a little bit. I'm gonna have to go work on this some more. So I tried to match up this, the width of his nose and then down here further, oh, that's pretty good. The width of his muzzle. And then it's interesting that uh, the width of the ears was substantially different from the sculpture to the actual dog. Uh, of course, every dog is different, and so in order to try to make it look like that breed and that dog, you're going to have to modify to get the details right. Now, um, I always start big and work my way down, because there's always room to cut more off. And of course, you can overdo this, and I have in the past, and it's taken me, you know, three, four times longer to do the sculpture than I can do it now, but it's a matter of caution. I don't want to cut off something that should be there, right? So I'm gonna go with the the bigger dog. Now, on the sculpture, what I noticed is that the ears actually stick out wider than the hips. How cool is that? So when I get the head situated, I'm literally going to cut this, I do the blocking straight down. 
make a little room for the tail on this side. And then I know I've got to come in some more, but I can't go wrong if I go tips of the ears and straight down, especially since the tips of his ears are closer in. So I'm going to, there's some eyeballing of this that is uncomfortable, but you have to make a decision and, and move on. And so I imagine where the top of his head is. This is kind of the crown, the high point right across here. And so I got to line that up with the high point here. And I've already drawn a line and I'm going to play around, draw some more lines, draw the line here for the, where the, uh, where his eyes are, draw the line for the front of the nose, um, where the, the brown spongy part stops and the hair begins and draw another line for the back of the neck, the back of the ears. So I get a really good placement this way. And then it kind of doesn't matter this way as long as I'm roughly in the center, but I'm also gonna measure that. So there'll be a lot of measuring and scurrying around here as I get this drawn in. A good stiff brush is a great tool for the chainsaw carver. Uh, help you uh, not tear your hands up and it'll help get all of the stuff out of the way. Because when you start trying to write, whether you've got chalk or pencil or marker, the dust all gets in the way. And this first mark, this first mark is on the crown of the head. I want to know what is the tallest point of my dog all the way across. Okay, then I want I want the front of the eyebrow. And I'm gonna measure on this side down and see that it is, um, oh boy. Well, I'm not even gonna to try to get a measurement, but it's to this line here. And my point is that line needs to line up over here so that when I press this down hard, I'm getting parallel lines. It's all bumpy, you gotta really watch it. There we go, nice parallel. Now I want the front of, um, I want where the, where the hair ends, where the hair ends and the spongy part of the nose begins. I guess that's cartilage. I want to know where that is. And that's a serious guess about right there. And then, let's see, I want, actually that's good, that's all I need. I was gonna do a bunch more, but if I've got those lined up, so here, this line cuts through right here where the fur and the black, solid black cartilage of the nose is. And there's the crown and the front of the eyes. Interesting. So anytime you're working in three dimension and all of your templates are obviously two dimension, some stuff's going to be off and you have to figure out, okay, well, based on these lines here, it would make I would need a bigger template to line up with these lines. So I'm gonna kinda take an eyeball it average and scoot it back just a little bit about, oh, that's probably too much. Let me come forward. Cause I'm really concerned that the, the eye line, this, this line right here where the eyes drop straight down mostly looking forward, but slightly to the side. I want that to be right so that my muzzle's not too short. I can always shorten it, but 
you can't make it any longer. So bear in mind that I'll try to get it. That looks pretty good. Now, if I'm wrong, I just have to make him sit up just a little bit more. If my head's too far back, because I've got plenty of wood to work with. Okay, that's not too bad. I've actually got him shifted a little bit this way. Not that dramatic, of course, but it's that direction. Because the back of his ear, well, no. Because the top piece here is wider and then it goes more narrow, so it would naturally fall to the back. It's gonna be okay. So let's verify a couple of things. Um, we want him flat or straight with relative uh, to the platform. So um, I have to pick. Let's say this is the middle. And I'm, I'm going from six inches from the left. And then on the back, I'll go six inches from the right. And this is relatively square. I worked really hard to make it square and that turned out pretty good that's that's really good so let's get another six inch mark here keep coming another six inch because i'm going to draw a line all the way down I gotta draw it in a bunch of places because it's hills and valleys. Mm, let's see. I'm gonna need another one right there. And then I'll draw this line. And then flip it around to the next curve, draw that line. I didn't draw enough. One more. Here. Just keep going down. All right, now I've got a good idea of where my middle is all the way down. And the reason for doing that is now I can measure out to the end of each ear. I can say, okay, I got three and a half inches here from the middle. I've got three and a half inches here to the middle. So I'm gonna cut this seven inches wide all the way down on this side to the platform. So I'll cut all the way down and cut in and just remove this piece over here. I'll cut almost all the way down. I'm gonna leave a little space for the tail and cut in, remove that piece. Then that's that'll be the maximum width of the sculpture. There's my cut line on the left, down the front. I'm gonna do a roll all the way down the back. I'm gonna do one on the right, and then I'm gonna make a mark along the side for where my platform's gonna be. So I can literally trace this line, make sure my, my bar 
is straight up and down this way. Cut straight down. Make sure it's completely level this way to the platform, the bottom of it, and just let it go all the way down. And when I get to the bottom, on that side, well, I gotta decide where I want the tail. Whichever side I'm gonna put the tail on, I'll cut up a little higher to relieve room for the tail. And on the other side, I'll cut all the way in to the seven inches. Back to the dog days of puppy power. Here is where I've stenciled in his head. And since the width of the sculpture does not exceed the width of his ears in this template, I've drawn parallel lines all the way down. I marked the center, went three and a half inches either way, did that on the front and on the back. So these pieces out here will be removed. This will be cut off and this will be the dog. Then I came down to the back. I made a decision. I want the tail on the right. So this is the cut line for my saw to come in on this side to remove that big piece to leave enough room for the tail. This side, this is the line to leave room for the platform on which the dog will sit and remove this big piece. So let's see. Okay, so then here I drew a line where I'll be cutting in in order to meet that edge and cut off that piece. And same thing over here. So I'll be cutting here to here in and then removing this big chunk. So we're gonna have a bit of a silhouette of a dog on both sides that is removed. dueling puppies left and right I'm not sure I think I'll make something out of these they look pretty cool what do you think and then we'll let the puppy out of the jaws here raise him up he's still pretty heavy he started out about 200 pounds now he's about 
I don't know, 60. So, here he is so far. Let me rotate him around for you. I gave room on this side for the tail. Hips and ears match. Symmetrical all the way across. Centered up with his nose and his ears. There we go. That is the end of most of the serious blocking. I'm gonna, with the smaller saw, I'm going to make this triangle. I'll draw in the legs and the hips again and I'll have to cut out a piece here with the smaller saw, and then, you know, this goofy shaped piece here with uh, the smaller saw.